Okay, welcome back to this Excel eSports course. We're in the final chapter, which is programming, and actually on one of the final how-to videos, which is gonna be about combinatorics. And this is kind of the branch of mathematics that deals with counting, arranging, ordering objects. So think of questions like, how many ways are there to order five things that are selected from a pool of 10 things? And you might be wondering why this is important in Excel, but let's just show you a few um, examples to get us going. So we might face um, questions like this, and I've, I've shown this case before. We had a number of scarves that we wanted to collect from this table are available in different cities. And the idea is that there's a cost to travel between all of these cities. We need to collect all three scarves in each question. What is the optimal route? So with a question like this, you might want to think about how many possible routes there are. And to do that mathematically, you have three objects. You need to use all of them. The answer is three times two times one. If you had four objects, it would be four times three times two times one. Luckily, there's a formula in Excel to do this for us. Um, we did cover this in the early numbers video, but permutes for permutations. So number, we have three things, number chosen, and we're gonna choose all three. So how many ways are there to order these things? Well, there are six ways. So six routes, that's very minimal. We can calculate that in Excel easily. So to go about this question, we might list out all six of those routes uh, calculate what we need to in terms of price and then pick the minimum one out of the six. The question then becomes, how do we order them in all of those six ways with some sort of formula? And we'll get to that in a moment, but let's go through another couple of examples. So another example is, is this map case here. So this is almost there. And the idea is that we start in the cell AO41 and we need to go to all the other green cells to collect them. And we wanna know the minimum route to do that. However, with this question, um, we were restricted because we couldn't walk on any snakes or this brick wall here. And there are nine other green cells to collect. So I'm curious if people haven't seen this problem, how many possible routes they think there are, but let's just um, list it out to show you. So if I say um, sequence of 20, and if I say equals permute of one and one. So with one thing, there's obviously only one route. With two things, there's two routes. I could go to object A, then object B, or I could go to object B, then object A. What about with three things? So we just showed that there were six. So where do we think we'll be at somewhere like 10 objects? Well, it's pretty drastic actually. We're over 3 million. So let's just keep pulling this down. Um, and there we go. That's how many routes there are with this many things to collect. And when we think about solving a problem in Excel like this, we know that the limit of rows in Excel is, is here, 1,048,000. So we couldn't actually do 10 objects because there's 3 million routes and you can't calculate that down rows, nor can you do that in the formula bar if you did it single cell and kind of iterated 3 million times. Luckily for us, there's only <laughs> nine objects. So there's 360,000 routes. So we could do it in Excel, if you watched the maps uh, chapter videos, you'll know that calculating a route from one place to another while avoiding objects uh, requires circular references and can be a bit slow. So going from one object to another nine times would be nine times as slow. And then we have to do that over again, 363,000 times. So that would probably be unfeasible. And we need to think of a quicker way to calculate it in an example like this. And one reasonably quick way is to actually do sequence of nine like that. And then we can do um, another sequence of nine, but across. And then we could list all of the distances between each location. So from location one to location one is obviously zero. So we'd have a zero going down the diagonal and fill this table in. It's not that many cells. That wouldn't be too hard on the calculation time. And then we could list out 363,000 routes. And if we know each location in a row, we can kind of just pick the locations out of our table that we made earlier. So we separate the calculation into two and it makes it run much faster rather than doing the actual map distance calculations 300,000 times. Now this problem applies to the real world um, quite a lot. It's called the traveling salesman problem. So you can Google that if you're interested. So think of something like um, Amazon deliveries. You have a number of trucks on the road and they need to go and deliver to many locations. What is the optimal route? Um, they can only travel on certain roads. So you have blockers, just like this map has blockers. And that problem is actually unsolved. You can't do this for any number of locations because it's not just Excel. Um, no computer is gonna be able to do that many combinations when you start to get into big numbers. The way it's solved in the real world is to take some kind of programming shortcuts that get you 99% of the way there. And that's mostly good enough, but it's not fully solved and 100% accurate, but we won't go down um, that rabbit hole. So again, the question we're left with here is how to list out all of the possible routes. And then I'm gonna show one more example before I get into the actual mechanics of calculating these combinations, and that's Lana Banana. So the idea is that we have this map, we place a monkey anywhere, 
and they can only move down or down right or down left. And placed in any cell, what's the maximum number of bananas that could be collected? So let's think about that for a second. We have 39 columns here and we have three directions we can go. So from the first row, we have 39 times three uh, options. At the edges, we actually only have two options because we can't go out of the bounds of the map, but I'll ignore that for now. And then from each of those new locations, we have three more options and so on and so on. So in this scenario, the numbers get so large, um, they get past kind of Excel's accuracy limits. And again, that was in the numbers video. So for a case like this, you can immediately discount listing out all the routes and then taking the maximum bananas uh, for the route. You can just see it's gonna be impossible. And at that point, that should be a clear indicator to you to abandon this route and think of a smarter way to approach the problem. I might touch on the solution to this um, problem later, if not, I will do a solution in the follow-up video to this where we'll walk through many example kind of programming case uh, solves and how to approach them. So we're stuck at listing out the possible combinations. And in all honesty, most of us use a Lambda for this because it's not that easy to do in Excel. So there's a channel, the Excel wizard, Bo. He is uh, an Excel genius. He writes all kinds of cool formulas and he has one called Percom. And what it does, you list out a number of things. So here we have three things, and then the number we want to choose is three. And that will immediately list out kind of all the combinations we can do. So one, two, three, one, three, two, um, and so on and so on. So here's our six routes. What we can then do is say index um, all of our locations on that table, and it will give us um, the routes across here. So these are all of the routes with no repeats. Now, I would highly recommend you go to Bo's channel he has his full Lambda set available there publicly, so you can go and look at how this works under the hood. There are also other arguments, so I could say that order um, does not matter, in which case there's only one combination. If order doesn't matter, we just pick all of them. But I could pick two things, for example, and say order doesn't matter, and then we get one, two, one, three, and two, three. So this is a really nice formula. There's also a version of this on a website called Vertex42. So I'll link to this page. You can go and check that out as well. Very similar thing, do it with a Lambda. But just for educational purposes, I'll show you a couple of ways you can, you can solve these kind of problems. The first is to do something called broadcasting. So we essentially take this, um, add a delimiter, and then say um, two col of this again. So we're going across and then down. Um, that gives us kind of a 2D array of all combinations. Now this does allow for repeats. So we could have this twice, this twice, this twice and then we want to broadcast it again. So if we said to call all of that stuff, then we get them all in a list and we can do another delimiter. So and a dash and this again, we expand it to 2D and then we flatten it again with to call. Now, if you watch the recursion video, which was the last video, you'll notice that that's what we're doing here. We're doing a process over and over again. So you can do this with the reduce formula to get your final list. Now, like I said, there's more than six things here because this is a method that allows um, repeats. So it will allow this twice and something else once, or this three times as we see with the first item and so on and so on. And sometimes you will um, want that. Another way to get all combinations cumulatively, so you could pick one or two or three things, is to use um, binary. So you could say base. Um, let's take a sequence of, we know there were six things, but I also want to include picking none of them or all of them. So I want to do add two to that. So I'll say sequence of eight, um, start at zero our radix, so binary, base two. Um, and let's just show you what that looks like. So here we get kind of all of the possibilities up to picking three of the items. We can see the biggest uh, length on this is three. So let's make them all length three. That's um, one of the options in this base formula. And then what we can do is split this down into its characters. Now we've shown many ways um, to do that um, throughout this course. So I'm just gonna do it quickly and not really explain that. But we split that down into uh, its components like that. So we could use this binary table to pick nothing, or where there's a one, uh, just pick one thing. So either the first, second, or third, so that would be those. Or we could pick two things. So here's the possibilities of two. Or we could pick um, all of them. So this is another method to get combinations um, without reference to their order. But there are many others. And again, I would highly recommend go, go look at Bo's channel, Excel Wizard. If you're feeling brave enough, dissect his Lambda, see how it works and that will give you the understanding. But my recommendation, get the Lambda um, and do it like that each time. So this is a short video. So I'm just gonna quickly go over the method for something like this. And the solution lies in something called dynamic programming, where you're reusing calculations. So that's a whole topic in itself. Go look on YouTube for dynamic programming tutorials if you wish. But the idea was to kind of um, change the bananas 
to a number, for example. And then instead of calculating all the roots and how many bananas you could get, you would work from the bottom row and say, okay, if I start in any of these positions, how many bananas can I get? And then if I start in any of these positions, how many bananas can I get? And you can reuse the calculation from before. So it significantly reduces um, what you have to do. And then once we have this baseline, we can say equals the maximum of what we had below it plus what's in the cell itself. So if there's a banana there, we can collect it. And then what you find is we dynamically pull that up so we've done kind of a dynamic programming type method and we haven't had to spill out millions and millions of possible routes. We've just taken a simple approach. What can we get in this row? Then what's our max in the next row? And then what's our max in the next row? And we're using the calculation up the chain. So question three here was kind of this method really. How many, what's the max bananas you can collect starting from that cell? So at that point you only need to say um, indirect of um, sheet one and the given cell. And hopefully I've got that right. There you go. I think question four was even the same thing again. Um, yes, it's just starting higher up so there's more bananas. And there's only five questions in this um, case. And the point in me showing you this um, is when you know the solution, it's super simple. But in order to see it, you need to know that the other way is impossible. And kind of knowing how to calculate the combinations should show you that. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'm going to go through this case in a bit more detail next time because we're going to do example solves for some of the programming cases that exist out there. So hopefully I'll see you next time.